We're excited to have everybody joining us today. Um, as we're as we're getting a few people to um, you know just get in here, um, I want to uh, just kind of move on talk just briefly about a couple of the uh, just housekeeping items on the webinar. Um, so one is we've got the um, uh, the questions tab right over in the, in the uh, webinar panel there. So any questions as we go through the webinar, feel free to kind of post those in that questions tab. Um, and we're going to, we'll answer some of those maybe throughout, depending on the nature of the question, um, or we'll wait right toward the very end and we've got a section kind of dedicated to Q&A and we'll get both Chris and Ben to, uh, to kind of go through those and answer those. So all through the webinar, put those in there, that'd be great. Um, if you don't mind, um, anything you pick up and learn, if you want to grab a snippet or a screenshot or something like that, feel free to tweet that. Um, uh, we've got our hashtags up on the screen there for both .mailer and Nosto. We'd love to uh, engage with you socially on those um, and, and kind of figure out what those key takeaways were for you. Um, we are going to be recording this session as well, and we'll get that sent out uh, at the end in case you want to share that with a colleague um, or you want to follow up with something else specifically. So just a couple of housekeeping items there. Um, we've also got a few uh, polling questions that we're going to uh, try to push out to you as we go through just to kind of get a sense for you know where you're at, who you are, what you're doing, some of those types of things. So without further ado, let's just jump in to um, to the webinar itself. Um, let me introduce quickly those who are going to be on here speaking, um, and then I'll give them a chance to kind of introduce themselves a little bit more if needed and uh, the companies that they're representing here so you can kind of see that they truly are uh, experts in the field here. But uh, Chris, I'm going to start with you. Chris. Chris has been around the software and e-commerce space um, and that whole world for, for over a decade. Um, I've known Chris for a long time uh, very well, uh, but he spent most of his time on the product side. Um, and during his career, he's, he's worked at a number of different organizations, uh, companies like Magento and Salesforce. And I know he's actually spent a pretty significant amount of time in the um, email space as well. So, I mean, his background spans across a variety of different verticals. Um, that's really, I know, from personal experience, allowed him to develop kind of a unique perspective or two as it relates to, you know, the technology that's available in, in today's market. And, and Chris joined the uh, Nosto team back in April 2017. Um, in his uh, current role, he heads up all the uh, the U.S. Uh, partnerships uh, for Nosto, both, or I guess all the platform agency and technology partnerships. Uh, currently residing in L.A. Um, as part of the West Coast expansion uh, for the Nosto team. So, Chris, great to have you here with us today. Um, we've also got Ben Stavely, uh, also with uh, well over a, a decade of experience in digital marketing, um, including spending about three years both architecting and selling a proprietary e-commerce system, and then about four years after that running a very successful London-based uh, Magento agency. So there's really not a lot about e-commerce that Ben hasn't had some sort of first-hand experience with. Um, whether on that uh, e-commerce platform side or now here, you know, of course, with .mailer. Um, Ben's been uh, leading for a long time our dedicated e-commerce team at .mailer uh, and now has recently, uh, I guess not even recently, it's been a little while now, hasn't it, Ben? But he's um, joined the uh, U.S. team, so sits in the New York office and heads up as VP of operations here. So, Chris, Ben, great to have both of you on the webinar. We look forward to kind of hearing from both of you today. I um, already mentioned myself, Brandon Briggs. I, I head up the sales and channel um, for the Americas here at, at Dot Mailer, and I'm excited to be kind of moderating today and, and you know, moving the conversation through the paces. So, so without further ado, um, I think let's jump uh, over to Chris. Chris, why don't uh, you know fill in any blanks there and uh, maybe give us a quick intro on Nosto, just so we know who you are and who you represent. Thank you, Brandon. Pleasure to meet everyone uh, this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. So a little history on Nosto. We've been around for about six years, and really the core mission of Nasto is to make it easier for marketers to pull real-time results and to be able to provide a, a relevant shopping experience. Um, so Nasto really is a complete end-to-end -end personalization system when it comes Muted. to retailers. Uh, we provide big data with a lot of pet, proprietary patents that we've developed and allows you to create the most engaging shopping experience, whether you're trying to attract customers, uh, convert, retain, or optimize. Uh, some of our features were able to tie this product data and this customer profiling data into Facebook ads, Instagram ads, some of the behavioral pop-ups. We made strategic relationships with Dot mailers so we can integrate some of that product data and that customer-rich profiling data, and we're able to track all this information. Some of the brands that we work with 
Um, the beauty of Nasto is that it is a modular platform, but it is a personalization platform. So people can pick and choose, and you can use Nasto in a variety of ways. Since growing up, you know, we've had a lot of strategic differentiators from just the way we've priced our patents, the strategic relationships that we've had. And if you look at uh, data not stable, Nasto has the number one market share when it comes to personalization. And that all speaks to how we, we've developed the company. Perfect, Chris. Appreciate that. Um, why don't we flip over now and um, let Ben, Ben, if you don't mind, just introduce uh, anything I missed and then uh, introduce Dot Mailer real quick. Thanks, Brandon. Uh, I think your, your introduction was, was spot on. Um, so yeah, a little, little bit about Dot Mailer. We're, um, we're an email marketing automation platform. Um, we do do other uh, kind of multi-channel capabilities, but email is really at the, the core of everything that we do. I think with the the amount of revenue it's generating in the ROI, that, that's always going to be the, the heart and blood of, of .mailer. Um, we're a global organization, so we're, we're calling from New York, um, but we have offices all around the world, including Australia, uh, South Africa, uh, obviously major offices in London, uh, and a few other in the EMEA. Um, and what we really strive to do as a platform is make advanced marketing tactics easy. So we take enterprise, uh, technology and functionality and we put them in a really easy to use interface that, that's quick and agile for, for marketers to, to implement you know quite sophisticated marketing campaigns and we're, we're really built well to play with others so we have uh, leading integrations with Magento, Shopify, BigCommerce, WooCommerce uh, and also CRM systems because we also have 50% of our client base is B2B so we integrate really well with Salesforce and Microsoft and Dynamics and then obviously we have a, a whole raft of technology partners uh, people like Nosto to, to enhance your email marketing e even further and there you can see we have uh, you know, some customers DHL we look after them in 45 countries and then we also have you know startup organizations launching their first uh, you know, Shopify store so it's a big big range for us as a client base Great, appreciate that introduction. Um, just uh, by way, as we as we dive into the questions themselves, before we do that, I mentioned polls. We got a few polls that we want to kind of throw out there. I'm going to do the first one right now, um, and actually just kind of send that out your way. We're, we're, what we're trying to do is find out who who you are to kind of give uh, both Ben and Chris uh, a little bit of direction. So I'm going to throw out a poll for you. Um, feel free to kind of answer those questions. What we're trying to do is just kind of understand who you are, where you fit in the in your organization. And, uh, and it looks like we got some great answers rolling in. So really appreciate that. Um, we'll let that kind of go on for just a second here and, uh, and we'll dive into it. So let's dive into the, uh, the topic, right? Dive in the topic of personalization. And Ben, I think let, let's start with you on this. When you hear the term personalization um, and you think about personalization based on your experience, what, what does that really mean to you? Yeah, I think personalization to me is Holding a um, holding a one-to-one -one kind of relationship and communication channel with with a user. So rather than treating every visit to your to your website exactly the same, um, and you know showing the same products and the same imagery and the same text to to every single person, whether it be on your website or through email, uh, personalization is is all about making making that communication uh, with that person, you know, directly one-to-one -one with 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 them. Yeah, great, great feedback, Chris. Let me let me throw that same question over to you in terms of personalization. What that means to you? Yeah, we really view that as you know being at the right place at the right time and the customer's preferred channel. So we like to track data from all sorts of different sources, whether it's uh, your online store, from email, from social, mobile. We like to tie that. And it's uh, to what Ben was saying. Just it's important to have that one-to-one -one relation and, and kind of tie that experience, whether it's product data or customer profiling data. We like to tie that in with some of the behavioral aspects. Great, yeah, good, good feedback there. So let's dive into the next question here in terms of um, some of the different, look, take a look at the few of the different layers essentially of personalization, right? Let's look at that by, by first talking just a little bit about you know, website versus email personalization. And, and Chris, let me have you kickstart this one for us if you don't mind. Can you tell us just you know, which is important in terms of you know website and email personalization, maybe your thoughts around those two? Uh, we think both are equally important. I think in today's world, in today's marketers, it's important to have that kind of one-to-one -one experience. When you look at email, it's kind of that one-to-many communication. So it's important to take that 
personalization of it from your website, whether it's looking at specific product pages, specific category pages, specific um, uh, data, and tying that into the emails so when customers are looking at they have that data. I mean, I think Microsoft has a really good statistic where they look at in email channels, most inboxes consist of 50% new newsletters, 20% in terms of promotions and social advertisements and the rest is all open real estate for like transactional order history confirmational type emails so it's important to have that personalization aspect great yeah it's all about that journey isn't it and that person personalizing that journey that's great um ben why don't uh, why don't you take a stab at this one here yeah, I think yeah, I'm totally of the, the same opinion as Chris here. Um, it, both of them are equally as important. And I think if you were to, you know, really only focus on making one of your channels personalized to your consumer and you, you didn't touch anything else, all that's going to happen is the, the effort that you've gone into that single channel uh, is going to go wasted because, you know, receiving an email, which is, is you know, highly personalized one to one to then go through to a website which is really generic and not tailored to them uh, you know you've you've lost all of that effort that you started with and the same was happened in reverse as well so i think um to really implement personalization properly you need to make that one-to-one -one, uh, experience consistent across every single channel that your consumer might might interact with you yeah, good, good feedback. I'm sure as buyers, we've all experienced uh, that particular journey and how disjointed it's been at certain, you know, with certain retailers here and there. So great, great to point out, you know, that's a, it's across all of those mediums. You really got to look at that. So thank you. Um, let me just throw out another quick poll question um, in terms of, uh, you know, helping the guys out here. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how advanced um, you think your, you know, personalization and your efforts are currently. Um, so if you would take a look at that question, just kind of see kind of where you're at, um, where you would rate yourself. And then what we're going to do is we're going to dive into some more specifics, obviously, and kind of talk through the content. And we'll kind of come back to this and use this as a way to, you know, set a bit of a baseline. So. Looks like we've got some great feedback coming in as well. So let's um, let's dive into this next one. Um, another layer to really consider um, in terms of personalizations are, are those specific offers, right? What are those specific offers that can be personalized? So so Ben, I'm going to start with you. In your experience, um, you know, from from all the different things that you've done in terms of e-commerce, but what what are the best personalized conversion driving offers that merchants can really use? Yeah, I think. Um, Probably one of the, the most obvious and, and one of the most talked about, but surprisingly, still one of the, the most common um, personalization tricks that people don't implement uh, and generate the most amount of revenue. I think we, we'd always start with abandoned cards. Um, you know, that's a, a triggered based e email, which is personalized to, to that user's behavior on your site. And, you know, making the huge of difference by being able to include the actual products that that user abandoned in the cart within the email, potentially showing them, you know, stock levels to, to show some sort of urgency. Um, that definitely is probably the, the number one that, that generates, you know, the, the best results from, from personalized emails that, that we see. Um, the second one following that really would be the, the browse behavior uh, and, and triggering emails off of that. So, you know, some, some online retailers find it a little, bit, a little bit creepy or a little bit spooky and it, it puts them off, of, you know, from, from implementing it. But I'm, I'm a huge advocate for it. Um, the way I, I see, you know, browse behavior emailing is uh, no different to if you were, a, you know, a consumer walking into a retail store and after you picking up two or three items, you know, a shop assistant coming over to you and asking if you need any assistance. Um, to me, that's no different to that email that you might send someone an hour after they've been on your website and browsed and, and not added anything to their cart. So it's all about providing value. Um, and having obviously again that email including you know the products that you looked at or or maybe potentially alternative products based on what they looked at um and that probably you know leads me on to probably the third one i think is really really valuable and that's the the kind of cross sell upsell based uh emails that you can trigger as well so um you know following every time a, a customer makes a purchase on your website you know you can in a you know, series of time afterwards maybe a week or two weeks afterwards um you know start selling them um you know product recommendations based on other items they bought or, or upsell items like accessories or add-ons to the product they recently bought. And um, all of those become so specific to that individual consumer that they're, they're pretty much you know, always guaranteed to, to generate you some results. 
Awesome, awesome answer. I mean, guaranteed those are, I think Amazon kind of led the way in terms of some of that, uh, you know, some, some of those types of things. And it's nice to see that that's available and in the hands of, you know, of us everyday retailers, um, if you will. So yeah, great, great answer. Um, Chris, what about your thoughts in terms of, um, you know, offers that can uh, really drive conversion? Uh, very similar to Ben's. I think it's all about the kind of customer's browsing behavior, but at Nasta, we really like the product graph and just kind of that relational data look at each other. So things that are performing at a specific price point, things that are, you know, have similar product attributes, that's one layer. The other layer is, you know, matching it to that profiling layer. So, you know, if you're looking at field discount items, if consumer shops for like red prices, you want to see something different. Uh, the other thing that we've seen successful with a lot of our merchants is kind of the, the pop-ups, you know, when a customer comes to the website, uh, maybe a discount type pop-up and then when they leave, um, another pop-up and then some of the behavioral stuff and then really it's just kind of get enticing that that merchant and that customer to uh, have some kind of action and drive them back to whether it's email or by, drive them back to the site we do a lot in the Facebook world so we do a lot of retargeting so customers that come to your site and they look at Facebook ads uh, we can update that in real time and drive them back to the site so retargeting and acquisition through social channels uh, is incredibly helpful and we've seen and have good stats around customers that have a really good ad spend in those channels. Great, yeah, a lot of a lot of good things to consider there. Thanks, Chris. So let's move on to the next question. Um, you know, what about those cases where we we really have uh, no customer history to actually pull from, right? So, Chris, let me start with you on this one. So, what what can merchants do when they have you know little to no order history or web behavioral tracking data and still be successful in personalization? You know, I think that a good rule of thumb we always follow is, you know, your best sellers, things that perform at specific inventory levels, things that are for performing at specific margin levels. Those tend to be the uh, good starting points. And as a customer engages with your website, engages with email, engages through other channels, we can start to tailor that experience and tailor that product or that customer profile a little more specifically. Great. And, and Ben, what about yourself? Yeah, I think the, the one thing that, that Dot Mailer em empowers merchants to do with this sort of uh, situation is you actually provide the segmentation on your on your customer base, um, and and that way you'll start finding uh, um, you know based on the data that you do have, you can start you know segmenting based on some demographic data. So maybe you know they haven't purchased, but you do know their gender and you do know their date of birth, and you do know maybe the the city or the town that they're based in. You could very easily, you know, find other customers of your business who match similar demographic information, um, and then start looking at, okay, you know, people of the same demographic information were, were making purchases of these types of products, uh, and that can then give you something to email those customers about who who haven't made a purchase. Uh, yeah, good good insights there. So let me move on to this next question. I want to chat for just a minute, get get both of your opinions around um, the whole concept of multi-channel and really trying to tie both email and personalization into that kind of overall uh, multi-channel experience. Um, ben, let's let's start with you on this, but how does email and personalization help really tie together or tie into, if you will, that multi-channel experience? Yeah, I think, um what, what I really feel about, you know, the the um, the offering that Dot Mailer and, and Nosto put together is, um, we're not just really a matter of, of tying uh, multi-channel you know, experience together. I think what we do by putting the data available in the in the merchant's hands and the tools that you know seamlessly synchronize together, I think it's really technology like us that really underpins that entire multi-channel experience. We're not really tying it together, we're, we're creating it. It's that that consumer can now move from your website to an email in their inbox, to uh, you know an Instagram ad, to a Facebook ad, it could be across different devices. And that experience that they're, they're getting is completely consistent. It's all about them, that we know they're the same person and we're tailoring their, their experience. So yeah, I don't think we, we tie it together, we, we, we kind of make it. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. I, I would say a lot of retailers that I've spoken with, that, that concept of multi-channel and, and just even saying, you know, how do I start to recognize a customer across devices and across, across these different channels kind of, it, it's always a sticking point. And so I think you're right. I mean, having email tie those together is a great way to do it. 
Um, Chris, what, what about yourself from your experience um, and, and kind of tying personalization and email into that whole multi-channel experience? Well, email will always be, you know, the, a channel in itself. It's still the most, you know, cost-effective way for retailers to get out messages, promotions. Uh, that's where, again, the, that one-to-one -one aspect is important, uh, whether it's, you know, a promotion, uh, an action item to drive them back to the site. We think that's incredibly important. You know, you look at some of the best retailers uh, that are out there that still have, you know, a good brick-and-mortar presence. You know, they're able to track whether it's, you know, you bought something online. Uh, when you're in the store, they ask for your email address. They can pull all your online customer behavioral data, and they can pull all your, your in-store data as well. Yeah, that's that good feedback. I, I've just I've got a question that's kind of come through. I'm just just curious um, for those maybe brick and mortar retailers who also have an online presence and are not actually asking for email address or may have some concerns about you know point of sale transactions. Do Ben or Chris, either one of you, have some advice for those guys that may be just a little hesitant to uh, to do that? And maybe some of the things that you've seen, you know, the good things you've seen, kind of come out of that. Yeah, I can take a, a first a first stab at that. Yeah, I think the co collecting retail data in store is is hugely valuable if you can you can achieve it. Um, the, the the tricky thing that I've always encountered is the quality of the data. Um, the reason behind that is, you know, you've normally got you know your Saturday or Sunday staff working a till on a busy day, and you know the long thing they want to be doing is, is asking each and every single person for their email address so um, I think there's two two ways that you can try and solve that problem um, one of them is is putting that that ability to enter the data in, in your consumers hands so uh, I've been to a few retail stores recently where while you're paying they have like an iPad like mounted on the till uh, and that allows you to enter in your details you know while you're while you're transacting so that way that the shop assistant isn't distracted um, but if you do want to, you know, leave it with the the, uh, the shop assistant entering it into your POS system, um, the one thing that has worked really well in a couple of retailers I've worked with is they actually come up with a, like an incentive or a bonus scheme uh, for the shop assistants to earn, you know, like an end of day uh, extra bit of money based on the quality or the number of email addresses they capture. So it's just a matter of driving the right behavior and either putting it in the hand of your consumer to do it or, or incentivizing the shop assistant in some way to make sure that the data quality is as good as it can be. Yeah, great, great answer. Very, very good answer. Yeah, I think to tie on to Ben's point, I think the loyalty aspect uh, is an important factor giving you that incentive. So, you know, loyalty in our opinion it's no longer just a point system. It's it's all about that customer engagement. So when they're in the store, like what are the questions you're asking? Um, I think a great example is Nike. Like when you shop on Nike online, they have all your preferences. But the minute you come in the store, they've asked if you shop before. They they grab your email address, um, and they can have all that rich data in there, and they can provide you um, products that you've looked at, things that you're interested, things that you might be interested, and that just creates more of an engaging in-store experience. Yeah, good good feedback. I mean, we we all sign up for those, and you know, where there's an incentive, it seems like there's, you know, always a reason to want to sign up. And then uh, that data just seems like it can drive so many different types of personal personalized emails. So you know, great feedback from the two of you. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit about email just and personalization just a little bit more. But uh, email's been around for a long while, right? Um, and we know that there's lots of um, new ways to be able to uh, you know, message with customers and, and talk to different customers. Chris, I, I wanna start with you on this one, um, you know, just pulling from your, your past experience, but you know, with all the new mediums that are out there and the different channels, I mean, is email still relevant or, or is email essentially dead? I think email's uh, completely relevant. Again, it, we, we view it as it's a separate channel though. There's your online store, you might have a brick and mortar store, mobile is another platform, social is another platform, and then there's email. Again, email is still that true cost-effective way to get your messaging out. So it's important that when you're getting those messaging me messages out, you can still create that uh, relationship with your customers. Because the way we look at it, uh, consumers are engaging with your brand in some shape or form. It's important for marketers nowadays to, to understand where customers are, are at in that custom, customer journey, what's their preferred channel, and how, to, how they want to receive that kind of information. And email, again, is that core one. Yeah, core thing ties it together. Ben, what about uh, what about your thoughts on this? Yeah, well, obviously, uh, 
working for a, an email marketing based company, I don't think I'll, uh, I'll ever be able to say that email is dead. Um, <laughs> But yeah, there, there was a there was a report not too too long ago by the uh, the DMA on you know the importance of email marketing and uh, currently in in, in the US uh, from the, the study they did for every every dollar that is spent in email marketing is, is generally returning forty dollars in return um, and and from the people they surveyed it's kind of the, one of the most invested marketing channels that people are picking mm -hmm. and it's also going to be an area where the marketer feels they can move more of their budget into the future as well so. Um, I think it allows you to put the most personal message together um, and put it in the hands of your consumers who are pretty much checking their smartphone you know, on, on a minute by minute basis. So wherever they are, email is your opportunity to, to literally you know, get a message to them in their hands. So I, yeah, I don't think it's going to go anywhere and it's, it's super important. Perfect. So will email always be a relevant marketing channel? I'd, I'd say we covered that and the answer is certainly yes. <laughs> Perfect. So We've talked through a number of you know good uh, personalization ideas today. Um, ben, let me start with you on this one. Right from your experience, how does a merchant really master the art of of targeting? Um, is that first step essentially in personalization? Yeah, I think um, we we often see the same mistake made over and over again, and that that's one thing we we always try and you know steer our customers and our prospects away from, and that's. People obviously listen to, to webinars like this or they'll read white papers and guides and they get all of these fantastic ideas and I think what then ends up happening is they kind of put this almighty strategy and plan together that one takes a long time to, to think about and then actually you go to the implementation and you, you find it quite difficult to work out where to start or you get, you get so overwhelmed you know, halfway through thinking I'm never going to get this full plan that I put together implemented. Um, so I feel the, the best kind of quickest and nimblest uh, and efficient way of, of mastering targeting and any kind of online marketing really is is really start small. So rather than going big strategy, you know, think what the end objective is, right, is to make more revenue um, and say, right, what's the easiest, quickest win that I can implement on my website or, or, or my email to, to help improve that uh, and make that one change. Um, and then, you know, two weeks later, review it. Has it worked? Has it made an improvement? Yes, no tweak it, change it, right, move on to the next thing. And I think having that ongoing improvement process and, and starting small, testing, tweaking, and then scaling um, is definitely the most efficient way about doing it. And I think that's the people who, who do that are, are really mastering the art of not just targeting and personalization, but just marketing in general. Yeah, good, good feedback. Chris, what about yourself in terms of mastering the art of targeting? Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Uh, Ben's point, I think, you know, we always try to guide our customers to, to crawl, walk, and run. So start with a small set of uh, customers, smart with, start with a small set of products, and the more you can see kind of the quick wins and the quick conversions, then we kind of bake in the, the larger term strategy. I think a lot of times what happens with marketers is obviously there's a lot of end goals and there's a big strategy, but if you take it in chunks, it, it's a little more effective. And that's really how kind of Nasto is designed. You know, we, we have a very easy to use uh, trial, it's easy to set up, see some of the data firsthand, prove it out, and then start to roll out the other features. Yep, good feedback. So I, I want to move on to a question that I have heard countless times. Get the two of you um, as experts in the industry, get your take on this. But I, I've been asked constantly, right, when, when is the best time to send email? And I've, I've heard just about every answer under the sun, I think, for this. And it's like, this day, that time... I mean, you know, all sorts of things. But Chris, let's kick this off with you. From your experience, when is the best day and time to be able to send emails? Um, it it kind of depends. I mean, it really depends on the nature of the email. You know, sometimes if it is like an abandoned card email or or something to that degree, sometimes right away makes sense. You know, we look at all sorts of send time optimizations. But I think for this for this piece, it's important to have a, a tool like a dot mailer that can really help automate that so it takes a lot of the guessing so figuring out the relevancy and the frequency aspect and then when the content should be delivered um, sometimes it can be a day sometimes it could be a couple days for some of the follow-up and browse uh, type campaigns but it really depends good, good feedback Ben what about yourself best time and day or, or whatever you want to say in terms of email send yeah I think similar to you Brandon it's, it's probably that number one question that you can guarantee you going to get asked on pretty much every sales call um, and yeah the, the answer is always that there is no set time or day from, from whatever I've seen um, 
the the difference is is there's so many variables you know the the, the product offering the pricing the need of the consumer at the time um, you know it could be the weather of the day could be influencing people's decision process you know all of those little things can can make that that change so uh, one of the things that that dot mailer provides is um, we have a feature called send time optimization and it just uses some machine learning really to to look at each of your contacts previous email engagement behavior you know when they were opening when they were clicking so when you send out a bulk email which obviously you know ideally you're moving away from but you have you know a, a big newsletter you want to send to everyone using the send time optimization feature is it actually chunks the email up and sends it to people in your contact list based on the most optimal time that we know that they've previously been engaging with your emails and you'll see that that will spread over a 24-hour period so there isn't a day or a time it, it really depends on the individual recipient and from the bulk emails obviously implementing automation um, triggering you know those one-to-one -one emails based on the person's interaction with your business whether it be you know abandoned carts or abandoned browse or win back or a welcome series that's not based on a, a time or a day that's just based on the the, the actual end consumers uh, you know interaction with your business that's the best time to be doing it yeah, great, great points. I mean, I've seen loads and loads of data points on this and, you know, hundreds of billions of emails, uh, you know, monitored to try to figure these types of things out. And, and I think you guys are right. I mean, I think the one thing that that stands true is if the email is personalized and if it's automated um, so that it hits the right time, I think it, it wins the day every time. So good feedback. Um, so we've heard some great you know you guys have had some great ideas for us here today um, but I know and we kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier the challenge is how do you prioritize this right so everyone listening in today how do they walk away with with something and say this is how I get started really changing how I do business by using personalization Ben let's start with you if you could break this down maybe for us what do we do first how do we get started with personalization yeah, I think the, the initial thing that you need to be doing is reviewing the, the technology stack that you have available to your business is, is up to the job. Um, look at, you know, start off with the quick wins. Think about, right, my abandoned cart emails or my, my on, you know, homepage personalization or my, my, uh, my a cart page where I want to upsell products. Does the tools that I currently have available in my tech stack allow me to do those simple tasks? And I think if you either have concerns that it's going to be challenging or you think that the, the stack just doesn't do it, obviously finding providers like Nosto or .mailer that make it easy for you uh, is definitely the, the first step you need to be doing. Um, once you've got that in place, uh, the next thing really is, is the quick wins. You know, listening to webinars like us and reading all the white papers and guides, you know, there are five or ten things which will become consistent across everything you read. Like we said, the abandoned browse and the, the abandoned cart and the upsell and the welcome series and the, the, the cart upsell, cross sell uh, personalization. You know, all of those things everyone preaches is like the quick wins. And that's really where you should start. And then, as, as Chris said earlier, once you get those foundations in place, that's when you can move on to the, the kind of more complex advanced strategies. Perfect. Chris, and, and your thoughts on this, where, where to get started with personalization? Yeah, I think the first step is just looking at the data that you have. You know, the information is the clean information. Do you have a good view of that customer, the channels that your customers want to be reached out to? And then to what Ben was saying is picking the right partners and just starting things in chunk, chunks and being able to figure out, you know, what makes sense for you, for your customers and do things in phases where it's, you know, find, find the right products, find the right people, and then roll out that message. To them. Great, great feedback. So uh, that's the um, we've kind of gone through kind of the standard questions and things that um, you know that, that we put together and that we wanted to kind of chat through today. We do have some questions that are coming in, obviously from from the group. So I just want to take a second um, let everyone know. Uh, feel free to you know drop some questions in that Q and A box. Um, you know, for Ben, for Chris, uh, if you want me to direct it to either one of them, that's great. Uh, happy to do that. But as you're doing that and as we're kind of chatting, I've got one more um, quick polling question. I know there, I mean, there's a lot of different things that um, we've talked about today. And, and I know, you know, 
both the dot mailer or the NASA teams would be happy to uh, to reach out um, at any time. So um, if you want to just kind of put some information in here as well, I mean, if you'd love to hear from us, um, you know, we'd be happy to do that. If you don't want to, you know, obviously just kind of put that information in as well. Now, we are going to be following up with a uh, recording of the webinar to give you some, you know, some places to start. So, um, you know, you will have some of that information. Um, but again, happy to work with you in any capacity um, that we can. So. Just looking through questions here, um, it looks like we've got we've got a couple. Um, so you guys alluded just a little bit um, to this earlier, but basically, you know, Dot Mailer, Nosto, you know, each you know doing our own individual things essentially. But but how does it come together? I mean, at what point, you know, how does that solution work together? Right? Why are we on this webinar today? Um, and how do those two products work together? Um, Chris or Ben, whoever wants to take that one. I'll take a first stab at that. I think the, the, the easy way that we work with Dotmailer is we're able to inject our product recommendations directly into, like, into their email, into their email editor. So it's just a simple HTML JavaScript code. Uh, once you inject that into the email editor, there you can have product recommendations that are in your welcome series. Um, any any acquisition type strategies, abandoned carts, and it, it's pulling that data to from your website and that customer profiling data as well. Great. So pretty easy to set up then. I mean, uh, if you were to say it takes, you know, a certain, <laughs> certain amount of minutes time, you'd say what? <laughs> yeah, it takes a couple minutes. It's it's a couple click. I mean, if you look at the Nasto UI, it's, it's a pretty marketing friendly UI and it's just a couple clicks. It actually generates the code for you and all you have to do is just copy, cut and paste. Oh man, that's great. Good, good solution for that. Um, I've got another question here. Um, in terms of you know how do I acquire more information on the customer besides email and order history? I mean we we talked a little bit about um, you know behavioral tracking, but you know I don't know Ben if you if you've got any thoughts on this or, or Chris, but acquiring more information on the customer besides just email and order history. Any thoughts there? What they can yeah. use. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, one of the things that I'm a, I'm a huge advocate for is obviously at, at the point of data capture, you know, you don't want to put a load of form fills in front of someone's way. It's just going to detract them from, from filling out that form. So do go for, for email only at the beginning. And then part of a, a welcome series that might send over, a, you know, a, a two or four or eight week period uh, where you're educating that, that consumer about your brand, your manufacturing process, your products, uh, you know, the customer service you provide. You could also start asking them for that information, you know, say, you know, thanks for joining us as a, as a subscriber. We, you know, we really appreciate it. As a business, we, we, you know, we strive to provide you with tailored communication based on exactly what you're interested in as a consumer. So, you know, do you want to let us know about it? You know, tell us a little bit more about yourself. And at that point, I think when you can demonstrate to them the value add that you're going to provide them by by asking, you know, two or three questions will change the way you communicate with them in the future. I think people are a lot more inclined to do it. And then I think aside from that, what then obviously would work really well is, uh, you know, maybe every month or every quarter, you know, run yourself a competition, uh, maybe, you know, for a free gift or, or, you know, a gift card for your website or your brand. And through those competitions, you can start acquiring different bits of information. So maybe this quarter, you know, you have a, a strategy to try and do a, a um, you know, like a customer win back series. But you need like one bit of information that's going to make the world a difference to the way that campaign runs. So run the competition that month, capture that piece of data as your main data point, uh, and, and then go from there. Great. Great feedback. I, I've got another one. I'm I'm interested to hear kind of both of your takes on this. Um, this is, uh, you know, we 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 ask the audience on occasion. We we need a stumper, right? We need to find a way to stump you guys. So I think they're trying to do this today, but we'll see. But but um, what what if your customer is not actually buying for themselves, right? Maybe they're buying gifts, or um, I'm just reading through this. You know, how, how do we know this? How do we keep you know emails and personalized content? relevant to the customer. So I guess an example might be, um, you know, I'm buying something, you know, um, perfume for my wife, for example. How do I avoid being retargeted or, or you know, personalized with a bunch of perfume and feminine related products down the road? That's a challenging one. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw it out to the <laughs> two of you. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go first, Ben? <laughs> Yeah, I think it, I think that that is certainly a challenge that that retailers face, and 
um, you know, you, you have to be really, uh, really smart about the way you try and approach that. Obviously, during the checkout process, you know, you could add just a simple tip box, which is, I'm buying this as a gift. And you could then obviously use that in your segmentation to exclude it from, from certain campaigns. But I think it, it's certainly a challenge. I think when you look at the likes of Amazon, where, you know, me and my girlfriend share an Amazon account, and that, that means occasionally I get retargeted with products, which I'm totally not interested in. Um, and that's, you know, that's a pretty large online retailer still struggling with that problem. Um, so, yeah, I think obviously asking during the checkout is one thing you can do. Um, I, I'd also just probably say, you know, depending on your brand, um, if you're just a, a fashion retailer, or obviously the, the percentage of people who are doing that versus people buying from themselves is probably disproportional versus the, the value of providing the personalization to the rest of your audience. Yeah, I'd say buyer intent is always the, the hardest thing to determine, but that's why we look at things on a couple of different layers at Masto. So again, there's there's that whole product graph where it's all the, the relational data around products. So products that are being bought with other products, associated products, again, price, color, size. Then the second layer down is that profiling layer, so matching it up with those products. So people that have bought that products, people that are looking at those products, and then people that might look at those products, I think is the best way we solve it. And then we have some of the general logic if you want to set that up, like the if this, then that type rules. Perfect. You know what, you guys both handled that very well. That's that, that's a tough question, and I think you're right. I think that's a challenge that um, that kind of is a you know challenge altogether for the industry. I mean, I think we just look for opportunities, right? I mean, you know, is the checkbox, this is a gift mark, so okay, maybe we don't, you know, include that, some of the personalization, you know, maybe, you know, I mean, there's other things, right? Maybe we just, we have to look at more than one order, more than one product purchased in order to, you know, determine some of the personalization, um, especially during some of those key times when we know that people are going to be shopping for gifts. So you guys, you guys did well on that. Uh, appreciate, appreciate that one. So um, I think I'm uh, just looking here. I think we've got most, um, most of the uh, questions um, answered here, just kind of going, um, going through this here. Any, uh, any final words, anything that uh, either one of you would like to kind of throw out before we just wrap it up here? Yeah, I think just probably touching on a, a point we, we talked about earlier, and I think, um, you know, something that, that Chris touched on as well is um, try and take, you know, these learnings and this knowledge and um, make sure that you don't try and go into things big. So, you know, do start that small, test things, optimize it, tweak it, improve it, and, and go from there. And that, that's really where you'll, you'll create a successful marketing strategy. Yeah, I think just really looking at what your overall business strategy and as it translate to, translates to your digital strategy, making sure that you have uh, the best data possible is the best starting point. And then all the other tools like us and Dotmailer uh, make sense to you know, kind of loop us in and we can guide you through that process. Perfect. Uh, quick, quick question, actually, for the two of you as we're wrapping up as well. Is there a point at which the data, you know, should be retired or should decay or something of that nature, right? Is there, is there a point in which we can say, okay, you know, if they haven't done something in, in a certain amount of time, we should, you know, only look at data that's relevant in a certain time frame? Or it, does that question kind of make sense? Yeah, I think from a, from an email marketing perspective. Um, the data that's really only relevant is all the time that the consumer is engaging with your email. You know, looking at the way they, they interacted with your brand and your emails from a year ago and they haven't opened an email since is, is probably a little bit irrelevant because, you know, not only has that individual changed, your marketing has changed and, and no doubt their inbox has changed as well. You know, they'll be receiving far more emails than they, they've ever been receiving since the last time you spoke with them. So I, I generally normally look at kind of the last 90 days worth of data to get the most the most relevant and the most accurate uh, when, when doing any sort of kind of email marketing strategy. Yeah, we really look at like last click data at Nosto. So people that have looked at it, uh, the last product pages that you, you've looked at and then tying that back in. So. Perfect. Well, you guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you both taking time to, to be here, um, you know, ask or answering these questions and kind of going through it. Uh, you know, we did our best as an audience to kind of to stump you, but you made, you made it through it. So nice, nice work. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to say thanks on behalf of both Dotmater and Nosto to everyone who joined. Um, appreciate your, your time today. Watch for a, uh, an email to come out 
um, with the link to the recording. We'd love to hear your feedback. Um, you know, based on that, feel free to kind of reply to back to us. Drop some comments in the uh, in the chat box here if you'd like. Um, but definitely let us know the types of content you're interested in or any lingering questions. And I'm sure either one of our teams would be happy to follow up. So thanks again. I hope everyone has a, a great rest of your day. And uh, until next time, adios.